Hi, this is Thomas Tucker. I'm doing a chapter two summary video for the mater for material science and engineering. First, in chapter two, we learned about the atomic structure. Uh, uh, first, we learned that an atom is comprised of electron, proton, and neutron, and these are their respective weights. <coughs> learned about their atomic numbers which is just the number of protons in the nucleus or uh, also this number of electrons uh, atomic number when you're looking at a periodic table you'll see is comprised of all these boxes that look like this you have the symbol which tells you which element you're looking at the atomic number number of protons and then you have the atomic weight which is the weight of 6.023 times 10 to the third molecules or atoms. Uh, an AMU we learned is one gram per mole. So that is 28.08 grams per mole. Next we learned about quantum numbers. And quantum numbers, there are four of them. There's N, which is the principal quantum number. L, which is the angular momentum. ML, which is magnetic, and the MS, which is the spin. Uh, I learned that spin can only be positive one-half or negative one-half. The range for ML is from negative L to positive L. Uh, L can be found as N minus 1, and N, something that is given. Uh, so, the N... Uh, shows you the energy level shell. L is the shape. The ML is the orientation. And, uh, these are the different shapes for different uh, orbitals and different quantum numbers. So what we use quantum numbers for, we can figure out electron configuration. So, so we're given and you can find out the values of your L and then your ML and then uh, that tells you what subshells and then uh, so there are three different types of or four different four different types of subshells there's the S subshell 1S, 2S, there's the P and there's Another P, and then after that, there becomes a D. And these subshells, the new subshells come in as we go across the uh, periodic table because they have more and more electrons, the increasing atomic numbers. Until there is the F orbital, is the last one. Uh, and this shows in the S subshell, or, or yeah, subshell, not orbital, for F. The uh, S subshell is comprised of one orbital, the P has three, D has five orbitals, and the S subshell has seven orbitals. Uh, when it within each subshell or orbital is where the electrons are stored, and the outermost being valence, which we'll discuss later. So in the S subshell, there's one orbital, and in each orbital, there's a, there's two electrons. So for the P, there's three orbitals, there's six electrons. For D, there's five orbitals, so there's ten electrons. For F, there's seven orbital, orbitals, so there are fourteen electrons. Let's do an example um, for CL. We're going to find its atomic number is 17. So writing these subshells out, the first subshell is 1, and is 1s, so yeah, 1s, and there's 17, so you're not really worried about your number of electrons yet, so the whole subshell, or orbital is filled, so there's 2. Go on to the next subshell, write a total of 4 electrons, and the next subshell is 2p, and there is up to six electrons, so 2p6.
Uh, the next subshell is 3S, which now we have 12 electrons total. And then the next subshell after the 3S is the 3P. So P can hold 5 or 6 electrons. Um, but we have used 12 electrons already for CL, and the atomic number is 17. So there are 5 electrons left. So it's 3P5 instead of 3P6. Um, and this shows, since this orbital is not completely filled, this is not a stable element. Uh, and we'll discuss. So atoms with filled valence shells are stable and non-reactive. These, uh, one example of these is the uh, the noble gases, which I'll point out later on the elect or in the uh, periodic table. Um, so atoms that like Cl that we just did that do not have their valence shells filled are looking to either gain or give up an electron. And this is called electronegativity. Um, atoms with larger electronegativity uh, tend or acquire electrons, while those with smaller negativity uh, give up electrons. So this table, sh this, this periodic table shows the uh, values of the electronegativity for each element. Uh, fluorine is the most at 4.0 and fruit FR is 0 0.7. <coughs> uh, okay, I talked about the noble gases. These are the noble gases. It's this column. And these all, their electron configurations are stable and they do not have electronegativity because they're already stable. Um, these are the alkaline metals, and these are the alkaline earth metals. Uh, these have a... Alkaline metals have a charge of plus one. Alkaline earth metals have a charge of plus two. And then these are the halogens. They have a charge of minus one. Which, which shows they're only... Uh, they're one electron away from... Gaining one electron, there. If they gain one electron, they'll be uh, stable. Um, we then learned about bonding forces. Um, this is a force versus interatomic separation graph. The attraction is going up, pulsion down. This is the attractive force. This is the repulsive force, and then this is the resulting um, curve. The or for the net force curve. Uh, so F net is equal to F attraction plus F repulsion. Uh, for most, for like equilibrium, F A and F R are equal, equal and opposite. So the F net is zero. It's also known that F equals uh, the derivative, or DE over DR. It's taking the derivative of the energy in respect of the interatomic separation. So then we also learned about bonding energies. <clears throat> this is a potential energy versus interatomic separation curve. They're similar. Uh, this is a repulsive energy, attractive energy. So these are opposite from the last curve. Uh, the net energy is equal to the attractive energy plus the repulsive energy. The attractive energy is equal to uh, negative A over R, A just being a constant, and B all, and then the repulsive energy is B over R to the N, uh, and B is also a constant. So let's do an example of calculating the attractive and repulsive forces between two ions. So we're given the ions K plus and Br minus. Their atomic radii are uh, 0.138 nanometers and 0.196 nanometers. Uh, 
So we knew that F equals DE DR. So now we're going we're to try to find the uh, attractive force first. So FA equals DEA for DR. Uh, we know that EA equals negative A over R. So this is going to be negative A or D of negative A over R dr which now if we take the derivative of that that equals negative a over r squared negatives cancel so equals a over r squared alright the uh, so a set as a constant is something that is equals 1 over 4 pi E naught or epsilon naught, which is the uh, permittivity constant uh, times Z1 E and Z2 E, where E is just the uh, charge of an electron and Z1 and Z2 are the charges of the ions. So let's calculate A first, which is going to be one over four pi times that epsilon naught, which is equal to eight point eight five times ten to the negative twelve force per meter. And there's also an R squared in there, I missed. So R squared. Uh, and then uh, times, we're going to leave the Z, or, oh, we can do that now. So Z1, we'll say, is the charge of the, K, of the potassium. So that's plus 1. And then times 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. Um, we're going to call it squared because there's two e's. And then Z2 is equal to minus 1. So charge of the bromine. It's your absolute value. So now uh, A equals 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th squared over 4 pi times 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 uh, over r times r squared as well. Um, so r is going to be uh, the r of the k plus the r of the br of the bromine. So that is 0.138 nanometers plus 196 nanometers equals 0.334 nanometers or 0.334 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. Now we're going to plug that in for the r squared over here. Um, to find our fa. Yeah. I misspoke. A equals um, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Z1 E times Z2 E. And we plugged that into this equation. And that's where this R squared comes from. So we're solving for our FA, which is equals um, 1.602 10 to the negative 19th squared over 4 pi times 8.85 10 to the negative 12 times 0.334 times 10 to the negative 9th squared. 
So we find out that uh, the force of attraction is 2.07 times 10 to the negative ninth newtons. Okay, so we all we said that the F net is equal to zero, so F A equals negative F or F R equals negative F A. So So then our repulsive force is just negative two point oh seven times ten to the negative ninth newtons. Next we learned about um, different types of bonds. First bond we talked, I mean, after we learned about the forces and energies between the bonds, we taught, we had to learn the different types of them. So the first one is ionic bonding. Um, ionic bonding is, occurs between two, uh, between a positive ion and a negative ion, and they have to have a pretty large difference in electronegativity because they want to transfer electron. So in this example, we have an Na cation, so it's plus, and a Cl anion, so it's negative. And remembering from the uh, periodic table, Na is a alkaline metal, so it has a charge of plus, like it's shown, and Cl has a, is a halogen, so it has a minus. So, Cl has a higher electronegativity, so it's going to gain an electron, Na ha sodium has a lower one, so it gives its electron to the sodium, and together they are stable. Then we learn covalent bonding, uh, which is uh, the strongest of all bonds. They share electrons because they have similar electronegativities, and uh, their bonds are determined by valence. So this is an example of methane, which is CH4. So, as you see here, C has four valence electrons. It needs four more. And H has one valence electron. So it needs one more. But C needs four of them, so that means we need four H's. That's why it's CH4. And then... And then this diagram shows them sharing, where the blue ones are shared electrons from carbon, the red dots are shared electrons from hydrogen. Uh, the next type of bond we learned was metallic bonding. Uh, valence electrons get released and they are um, making the ion core positive, making it a cation, and then they're in a sea of electrons and bonds occur between these cations and the electrons and that forms a metallic bond is a is a positively charged ion core or a cation or a cation in a sea of electrons is metallic last type of bonding which is the weakest we learned was secondary bonding or known as van der waals so uh dipoles are is an atom or a uh or a compound that it, it becomes uh, positive on one end of the ion and negative on the other end of the atom and then these uh, they get attracted to other ones like this here based on what charge on what side for the compound and last, we, ta we talked about how bonding um, is connected to the different types of materials we learned, which were ceramics, metals, and polymers. So you see that ceramics are mostly ionic and covalent bonding. Metals are metallic bonding, obviously, and polymers use covalent and secondary bonding. Um, ceramics have a large bond energy, which leads to a larger melt, uh, melting temperature, higher energy, and metals have variable bond energy, so they have moderate melting temperatures and moderate um, act energies. Since polymers are they're dominated by secondary bonding, they have really small 
melting temperatures and energies due to the how weak um, secondary or van der Waals bonding are. And that's it for chapter 2.